Hello, happy International Week. My name is uh, Dr. Gigi Sakuban. I'm the Vice President for Diversity and Inclusion here at Ohio University. I am supervising the LGBT Center, our Multicultural Center, our Office of Multicultural Student Access and Retention Office, as well as our uh, Multicultural Center and Women's Center. I would say the main thrust of our office is really to provide diversity and inclusion education across the campus and find ways to really bring our campus together at the core of our work. As the pandemic hit in March, all of us were a little bit thrown for a loop. And we wanted to still be supportive of our underrepresented students at the same time making that transition. You know, we immediately changed our website and like let them know that the staff is still available remotely. We partner with the Counseling and Psychological Services, so we immediately started to plan, you know, different one-on-one -on -one programs, interventions, also group therapy programs for students as they started to adjust online and then also partnering with the academic colleges to make sure the students were aware of the resources, particularly the first year students, you know, having to shift over. And then the other piece is we wanted to make sure that we were having ongoing programming throughout the pandemic. In June, when the Black Lives Matter movement kicked off again, we had to address immediately some of those things that happened after George Floyd. One of my colleagues and I thought about a program that we had back in Illinois where we brought Sharon Cooper, who's the sister of San Sandra Bland, who was killed in 2015, and we thought it would be helpful. Then, you know, our campus can have a conversation around, you know, social inequities, racial injustice across the U.S. and how that really contextualizes here at Ohio University and really having somebody who was in the throes of all of that. That actually kicked off a monthly diversity speaker series that we've been doing since that time and so i think for us it kind of provides kind of stability and regularity of like okay what's what are we doing this month what's this program next month and then everything else really folds around that that's really been our thing and i think the piece around the global connectedness is even more so because we've even had this conversation multiple times over the summer about how because we are virtual we not only have to reach out to just the people in ohio university but even broader so we've had people from across the nation really participate in these monthly seminars. So it's been really powerful. Toward the end of the summer, the, the next piece was really getting our website through a branding campaign. So it actually just launched this last Monday and it's called Visible. So I'm really proud of that. And it's um, a way for us to showcase diversity and inclusion on campus, including international students and others to uplift the diversity and inclusion initiatives across campus, not just the things that we're doing in our division as well, but we also were able to include a diversity dashboard, which I've been working on since 2018. <laughs> so institutional research finally got a, a really suitable platform to be able to host it. So it's really great. This is probably 20 years in the making because people have been wanting that kind of data easily accessible on the web. So I feel like we've finally gotten to that point. It's the first step, but I just figure these small steps are the things that will continue to keep all of us connected during this pandemic and continuing to do the programming and really create that presence online when you can't see each other in person. Now we're looking at our diversity certificate program. So I think that'll be one piece. And I think the other piece is the division is coordinating the campus diversity and inclusion strategic plan. So I think being able to officially roll that out by the end of the fall, beginning of the spring. We were selected as one of four institutions in the United States to be part of this diversity self-study. So they're creating an inclusive excellence index that campuses can use to measure their diversity participation and programming and things like that. And then in the spring, the hope is that we can finally use that as kind of the springboard to then start to review the policies and procedures on campus that who may or may not be marginalizing different groups of students and how we can we change those for the better. I think just being able to see what the spring holds, I know we're going to be bringing back some students. So if we will be able to do some things in person, I think a lot of people are looking forward to that. We're going to do an MLK Juneteenth committee just together. And so MLK will be celebrated in January and then they'll also start planning for Juneteenth for the middle of June. The beauty of the plan is that there are you know, four core values, and they're really broad enough to encompass everybody. The point of it was not to create a plan where we define what international does or we define what engineering does in terms of their diversity and inclusion efforts, right? So there are pieces like, how do you create a sense of belonging? How do we create assessment around the work that we're doing? How do you measure the impact? How do you create diversity in the curriculum? And then finally, the recruitment and retention piece. It's not specific to certain areas, but you all, in terms of the international students in the international area can define where you fit in those four pieces. So I think that's the beauty of it is that it's not so restrictive where we define for people what you need to do in these because everybody is going to be different. And that's the point is that it's a framework, kind of the foundation, and then everybody kind of builds on that.